Hi everyone, it's James here from Production Expert, back with another gear review. This time we're going to look at some new microphones that the good folks at Audio Technica have sent me. Uh, I've swapped out my usual snare, rack tom and floor tom mics for some goodies that arrived in the post this week. On the snare drum, I am using this baby. This is the AE2300 Cardioid Dynamic Instrument Mic. Now, they rate it for things like um, guitar cabinets, brass, percussion, hence I thought I'd whack it down here on the snare drum. Good place to start. Uh, it's quite small, gets it out of the way. The clip's nice and solid, I like that. Moving on to the rack toms, I've got a pair of these babies. These are the AT. 350A gooseneck instrument microphones. Now they're cardioid polar pattern, but they're a condenser capsule. So it gives you a nice bright top end, nice clear attack. Now they rate these for things like uh, woodwind, brass, anything where you might use a clip mic, this thing's really, really handy. Um, clips really nicely onto the toms. I've had to do a little bit of jiggery pokery and move things around because of the way uh, this particular mount clips onto the tom rim, but it's nice and solid. It doesn't rattle. It's not making any noise and they're quite small form factor. So it gets them out of the way. And the gooseneck means if I do clunk them, they're not going to move too much. I'm not going to damage them. That's a good thing. They seem to sound great. Um, yeah, all good so far. The last mic which I'm using on the two floor toms effectively, the low two rack toms, are ATM 230s. Now these are a hypercardioid dynamic instrument mic. Again, great for things like brass, low brass especially, but especially for rack toms and floor toms, which is why I've whacked them on here. Hypercardioid, theoretically meaning we'll get a much closer, much tighter, much more rejective, if that's a real word, response from these babies. So we should only be getting the toms through these particular two mics. So in initial testing, uh, it's sounding pretty damn good. I'm not having a problem going between the uh, two rack toms with the ATM 350As and the two floor toms with the 230s, even though we're going between cardioid condenser and hypercardioid dynamic. Um, it just sounds really quite nice and smooth. I really like the AE2300 on the snare. It's nice and small. Even with a 90 degree XLR, it just gets it out of the way, makes it a bit smaller. And it's a much sort of smaller profile of thing than even something like an SM57, which is, let's face it, what the whole world seems to use on snare drum. So we're in the control room now. Desk, Pro Tools. What else do we need? Uh, we've also been joined by Teddy, the studio dog, who hopefully will not be causing too much chaos. Um, so. What we'll do is we'll play back each of these elements, these microphone parts. Uh, we'll start with a snare and I'll play the top because obviously that's the important one. The bottom one, which gives us some zap. Um, and yeah, here we go. So this is just the snare on its own. None of the other mics in at this stage. So as we go through, I'll, I'll release all the other mics so we can hear what's going on as a whole kind of kit sound. But to start with, we'll just hear the mics in question. Here we go. Just the top. Both together. Bit of verb. So as you can hear, quite a lot of the kit sound comes from having all the mics engaged. You know, it's going to be everywhere. Uh, I'm surprised actually how much we're getting through those um, kick mics, but there is quite a lot of trouble cranked up on the console. So, um, hey, not to be unexpected. Let's have a listen to the rack toms. That's just the top. Bring in the overheads. A 
again, so much of the tom sound is coming from the other mics. When people think of drums as being a collection of mics, you really shouldn't. It's one instrument. All those microphones make up the tone of the drum kit. Let's go on to the floor toms next. Again, let's cut everything that isn't a floor tom to start with and cut the verb as well. Here we go. The overheads in the verb. I think that sounds great. Um, big tom sound for me is really important. So let's put the whole kit in this time so you can hear exactly what's going on. A bit of reverb, no processing at this stage. I do really like a big open tom sound. I don't like the kind of tennis ball effect. I'm really not into that. Um, so this next pass we're going to do will be with uh, a bit of processing on the snare uh, and on the kick drum, mainly coming from this lot down here. So on the snare, we're using the 1176 side of the 6176, uh, snare top, that is, and the kick is being processed by the two WA76s. I do like my 1176 sound. It's a great noise. It's just the right sound for drums, I think. So let me kick that in over here without upsetting his nibs too much. And let's hear that back. Now the snare sound might be a bit too loud now, but we'll tweak that as we go through. Sounds great. Sounds like my drum kit. Sounds like me playing it, which is, quite frankly, all I really want from a microphone. The cool thing is these new Audio Technicas are really rugged. They're built for the road, but they sound great in the studio. Again, what more could you need? Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at these new Audio Technica microphones and a bit of a sneak kind of peek into my new workflow with the console, outboard gear, and, of course, Pro Tools. But for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert. He's been Teddy the dog, and we'll see you again soon for some more gear talk.